In this video, we are going to explain why microwave frequencies are interesting for most of the solid state quantum devices, especially for superconducting qubits. We saw before that we can make an artificial atom using a superconducting circuit. Since this circuit has a nonlinear element called Josephson junction, the energy levels are not equally distanced. And this allows to uniquely address each energy level since each state transition has its own unique frequency. These quantum circuits are extremely sensitive to noise. Since a large part of the noise is proportional to temperature, we put those circuits in a cold environment called a dilution fridge. Since a superconducting circuit or a qubit can be designed, we can tune the parameters to determine the transition frequency. Suppose the distance between the two energy levels is not large enough. In this case, the thermal energy inside the fridge can bring the qubit from the ground state corresponding to zero to the first excited state corresponding to one. Since we want external control over the qubit, this thermal transition is undesired. Therefore, we need to tune this frequency to suppress transitions due to thermal energy. Now let's roughly calculate the frequency associated with the existing thermal energy in the fridge. The thermal energy is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the temperature. The frequency associated with this energy is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency. A standard dilution fridge can reach a temperature of 20 millik corresponding to a frequency of 0.4 gigahertz. In order to have control on the transition between the zero and one states, the transition energy corresponding to the external field needs to be much higher than the thermal energy. Much higher could be something around 10 times higher and this will result in a transition frequency of 4 GHz. When we look at different qubits, most of them work in the range of 4 to 8 GHz. Microwave frequencies are very interesting since, as we've shown, these frequencies are high enough for their standard cryogenic techniques to be used and we can take advantage of well-established microwave components and techniques used in the telecommunications industry. So we see that the field of superconducting quantum computing has created lots of opportunities for RF and microwave engineers.